All right. Uh, next step in uh, behavior driven design. Uh, how are we going to keep track of our projects? So, uh, you know, this seems, you know, kind of an oxymoron. Agile is this loosey goosey soft development with informal teams and scrum teams and all that. How are we going to plan this in Agile? Uh, how are we going to estimate time if there's no plan? <laughs> and, uh, well, can we use user stories? That seems like a big problem. And uh, if we could use user stories, what would be the tool that we would use? So, so in measuring productivity, uh, if we try to use user stories per week, the problem is that seems right, but the problem is some of them are much harder than others. So if you got one hard user story done versus three simple ones, are you doing well or not? So what's the rocket science solution to this? What we'll do is we'll just assign points to each user story. <laughs> okay, how about one for straightforward, two for medium, and three for complicated, all right? And that's the big idea here. Instead of just counting user stories, we'll count points, and we, the team will make up the points per user story. And what velocity is, which we've mentioned a few times and saw on the slide, is just the average number of points a team completes per week. So the kind of the simple beauty of the system is you come up with points for your team, you estimate your stories, and then your team figures out how many of your points you complete per week, and then given your historical average of how many of the points that you assess the user stories, you can guess how much work, how long it'll take you to finish the rest of the user stories you want to do. So that's the big idea. So how do you actually assign the points? Uh, and so typically, we start off with one, two, three. That's a good place to start. After you've been in it a while, you might have five and even eight. So the, the Pivotal Labs people, which we'll quote here, uh, they use, they, the Fibonacci scale is what they use. And even at Pivotal Labs, a company's been doing this for many years, eight is extremely rare. How do you actually assign it? it when you get together your daily scrum, you talk about the user story, and everybody goes one, two, three, and holds up fingers, right? And, and then you just average them, what, what they do, right? Is it two or three, stuff like that. Now, if one person says two, which is kind of medium, and one person says hard, five, which is really hard, you don't just average those. What you do is you stop and try, there's a disagreement right here, right? This is one of the things we talked about. There's, there's some difference in assumptions, some difference in experience that makes them think, wow, this is gonna be really easy and this is gonna be pretty hard. And so you wanna talk this out before you go, you go forward. Our advice is that if, you, if anything is more than five, you should divide that up into simpler stories. You don't want some, this big monster on the backlog that nobody wants to work on because it's going to take so long. So break it up into smaller stories as you go ahead. And like I said, velocity is a self-assessment. It helps you figure out how fast your team work, spends your points. So it's like your own currency. And as long as you're consistent over time, it doesn't matter if you're doing five points per week or ten points per week. Or if you want to feel better, you can make the points Give yourself a lot of points. <laughs> really plow out. Oh, we're doing 30 points a week. How, yeah, yeah. You can feel, go to the bar and brag to your friends. But it's a self-evaluation, right? As long as you're consistent and it helps you predict what you're doing and helps you, gives you insight, that's, that's what you need to do. Now, once again, so this, these are pretty simple ideas. Well, wouldn't it be great if we didn't have to calculate this all ourselves? Or it wasn't, wouldn't it be great if there's a tool that helped us keep track of the user stories? And there is. So this company, Pivotal Lab, built this tool called Pivotal Tracker. And it's just bookkeeping for user stories, but as long as we're doing the bookkeeping of how many user stories you're finishing and there's points associated with this user story, well, we can calculate your velocity for you. And we can, if you put in things like when you want to release something, we could guess how long that's going to take. So this uh, little bit difficult to see window here, what the Pivotal Tracker, which is this, uh, Armando mentioned it last time, it's this tool that runs on one database at this lab that handles all the projects in the world. It's not that heavy a load. It has, the web browser interface has separate panels for each of the features of it. So one is the current, that's this one in the middle. This is the, the user stories people are working on. And it's a little hard, to, it, it's very hard to see. But these little blue things are the number of points for each of these stories that are being worked on. Uh, the other panels there are, uh, there's the backlog panel, which isn't shown. There's an ice box, which are user stories that have been sitting around, you know, cold storage for a long time in case you get to the backlog. And there's that things that are actually done, right? You actually finish some things and you put them there. Uh, the, it shows the, and this team is, this number right here in the corner is what the velocity is for this team. So it's 10 points uh, per iteration that's being used. So it, this thing is really easy to use. Uh, and yeah, I think everybody who's tried it for, in the classes has uh, started using it. 
And what's, one of the ideas in here is within each of these windows, these are in priority order. And what Pivotal Tracker will actually do is take things out of your backlog since it assumes it's in automatic order. And as you finish the thing, it'll pop in the next, pro, next uh, user story that you're supposed to work on since it's in prioritized order. So that's Pivotal Tracker. Uh, I think I said those things. Ah, how do you complete it? Uh, I guess I'll talk about that. So it's completing this done panel. And then you can even stick in release points. You think about software releases. So when all these user stories are done, that's I'll do a new release. And you can calculate the time to the release by points. Something that they added since we started this book is what they call an epic panel. And what an epic panel is, is you put together a bunch of user stories that are related because together they provide some important feature that they might want. So they're independent of the, of the backlog, so you might also use epics. What are the roles? Uh, so it's not up to the developer to decide when it's done. You know, you could imagine, well, that looks good enough to me, hit the button, right? So they borrow from the Scrum ideas of a product owner. So in the Scrum, right, one of your team members is the Scrum master and one of them is a product owner. So the idea is before you can sign off, you say, I think it's done. The product owner takes a look at it. And then if the product owner thinks, you know, representing uh, the perspective of, of the uh, owner, thinks the story is done, Mark's done if not, and rejects it, and you got to, you know, sorry, it's not ready to go. Here's reasons you got to go back and work on it. So it's not just up to the developer to do that. Uh, Pivotal Tracker, kind of like there's spikes and things like that. They have two different things. Features are user stories that provide business value to the customer. So uh, let's... Uh, Add, and the, you know, you have to get the consent. Let's add the consent box uh, on the checkout page so that you agree to that. So there's points that are associated with it, value to the customer. Those are features. There's also things called chores, which you can keep track, which is work for the team to do. So they're necessary, but they don't provide any obvious value to the customer, like find out why the test suite is slow, okay? So there's no points associated with that. Now, to do uh, this work as a team, you're going to need, besides tracking what's going on, some space to work. And let me just talk about it here. So Pivotal Tracker does allow you to attach documents. So use your stories can have documents associated with them. You may know there's a wiki associated with your GitHub repository. So that's another place for your team to work. We use Google Documents a lot. You know, teams of people uh, developing uh, either drawings or presentations, spreadsheets, all that stuff. It's easy for the group to work on them. And then if you want to use chat rooms, an uh, uh, open source one is called uh, Campfire, where you can have password protected chat rooms for your team. So these things your teams might want to work on now that uh, you're going to start working with customers. 